And we're back with more Rooster Teeth news. They fucked themselves in probably the worst way imaginable. Today, as part of a larger content review process, we are removing some videos that we no longer feel comfortable hosting on our platforms. Yes, Rooster Teeth is doing the equivalent of internet book burning on themselves. I'm not fucking joking you. They're going to be deleting some of their content, or hiding some of their content, or putting up disclaimers and trigger warnings on their content to appease their woke audience. Now, is this surprising? No. And as a business decision, since most of their anti-SJW are just reasonable people that used to watch their content have done left the platform, it's actually a smart-ish business decision if you're going to appeal to them. But this is also happening onto a lot of restructuring going on at Warner Media thanks to HBO Max is starting to come out. And with all the stuff going around about Black Lives Matter, and you do you guys do remember the Michael Micah Burton shit, and then you also remember that BLM live stream without a single black person on it, and then they're always like, oh no, we want to strive to make it a better rooster teeth for diversity and minorities and stuff like that, we want to make it more equitable. Yeah, it's all a little bullshit. We all knew it was a load of bullshit from the beginning, and now they're going to kill their content as a result of it, because, partly because Warner Media is, you know, incompetent. But a decent bit of it is because Rooster Teeth is just, they're just, they're stupid. Very, very stupid, very, very woke. And this is coming from the same people. Okay, what they're doing right here, this is what they wanted The Simpsons to do with Apu. I remember specifically, Lindsay Jones flipping the fuck out at people for saying that Apu should definitely stay on The Simpsons because there was no reason to get rid of him. And she made the equivalence of Tom and Jerry re-release cartoons on DVD where it had the disclaimer saying, oh, this has racist shit in it because this was made in the 60s. And this should be like that too because Apu is a racist stereotype even though Apu, Apu is one of the smartest characters in The Simpsons. And Jay Bongo literally made a whole uh, <laughs> video debunking a bunch of the points from the documentary that they were citing the problem with the poo documentary by that fucking asshole racist Indian dude who's racist against his own people because he grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah, it's that self-hating liberal stereotype that they enforced. So, let's read the rest of this thread. We took an honest look at the 17 plus years of videos, many of them made live and uploaded on a daily basis and concluded some do not fit the ethos of our company today and are counterproductive to the work we are striving to do and be more inclusive of all people. You were making jokes of everyone, I say that's pretty fucking inclusive. He had gay jokes, he had transgender jokes before it was transgender, it was more like drag queen type of stuff. You had anti-conservative jokes, he had anti-liberal jokes sometimes, you had a lot of shit in there. Don't come to me like this is like the worst thing ever. It's like you guys just made jokes. I there are so many episodes you can remove it on that basis from Red vs. Blue, just based on the jokes alone. Especially with the character of Donut. We aspire to entertain our existing community while fostering connections with broader diverse audiences. Any content that doesn't do that doesn't belong on our platform. Okay. Okay, that's that's a migraine-inducing little sentence there. You do realize you can make edgy jokes and keep them up and still th th thrive for that type of stuff? There's no reason to get rid of this. There, there's literally no reason to get rid of that. None. At all. And it's even stupider to put up a trigger warning because it's like, guys, we all grew up in the 2000s. That's the audience. That Rooster Teeth originally cultivated. And you're just going to kick all of that stuff to the curb? Thank God I have Red vs. Blue seasons uh, 1 through 10 on DVD. Because I'm sure shit ain't going to watch it online anymore. Unless I buy it off Google Play. Because, you know, Google Play actually has some good stuff on there. They aren't trying to edit down anything. This is what Rooster Teeth is trying to do. They're trying to edit down shit. Put up disclaimers. If you can't handle edgy 2000s humor... Then, I'm sorry, you need to get the fuck out. Alright, that may be gatekeeping, and sure, I'll take that criticism, but seriously, edgy 2000s humor is not that bad humor-wise. humor, humor -wise. It's not even that bad offensive-wise. Jesus Christ, this was nine years. Nine fucking years. 
before we ever before we ever got to Modern Warfare 2 and the lobbies there. I mean, Jesus Christ, the MW2 lobbies were insane with how bad people could get with cursing each other out, calling people racist jokes and stuff like that. It was all in the spirit of competition. These people grew up, and the people who made Rooster Teeth grew up in that type of environment. You could tell they were people who played Quake, they played Marathon, they played Doom. They were in that trash talk community. But no, because this new age of politics has so many delicate sensibilities instead of, you know, just having honest-to-God fucking conversations. You know, it's just... It's just hollow. The review is ongoing. Over time, we will also edit videos, provide disclaimers where appropriate, and continue to remove content if we choose soon. If we so choose. This is an ongoing process, and this is by no means our last update on the topic. Actions speak louder than words, and we hope to see your actions clearly. Our actions clearly now and in the future. Don't hesitate to hold us accountable and offer your feedback. <laughs> no, fuck you. Fuck you, Rooster Teeth. It's like that's the final nail in the coffin. You have no creative credibility. If you're willing to censor your work to kowtow to the outrage mob, then you're no better than the people who you criticized at the time, or you made jokes about at the time, who were like, oh, video games are the bad things, we should be censoring them and all that stuff. You guys used to proclaim that you weren't going to stand for censorship. You guys were an outlet of expression. You were in a small indie company who was living the American dream and got a ton of money just by making machinima to start things off. And now you're just gutting that dream. You are just continuing to show people that you are not the guideline to follow when it comes to making independent creator made content on YouTube or otherwise. This is disgusting. This is a historical. This is a moral. If you really think your content is that fucking bad, then why the hell even work at the company then? Because that's a wide range of your content, ranging from then and now. All right. So should we should we kill off the character of Donut? Should we remove him from Red vs. Blue history altogether just because oh he became uh he became somewhat gay? Should we? Get rid of all the trans jokes that you had in the first few seasons of RVB? Should we get rid of all of the good storytelling you did, even if it had a few edgy jokes in it here and there? Should we get rid of the retard jokes y'all made about Caboose? Why? There's no reason to do so. There's no reason at all. This is And this is similar to the same bullshit that's coming up about topic, Tropic Thunder... You know, oh, Robert Downey Jr. was in blackface. He should be canceled for that alone, despite there's be the context literally debunking the point that they're trying to make. Because the context of Robert Downey Jr.'s character in Tropic Thunder is he's a method actor, and he's a method actor who takes it way too far. And they call him out for it in the fucking movie. And he realizes it by the end. Alright? And it was, and funny enough, he was told off by a gay character who happened to be black. Let's, let's read some of these comments here. So, Voice and Dragon, or Dragoon, had a really good point. Guess you'll be removing most, if not all, of Red vs. Blue, especially the scenes of Donut being bad LGBT representation, and most of Ruby for being cultural appropriation and cultu cultural misrepresentation, then. Which is true. I mean, I was gonna go- Excuse me, I was gonna cover this topic when it came up a few months ago, but there was a stupid fucking, uh, thing where Rooster Teeth was having like an art context to see if there, you could make a really cool monster design for the next season of Ruby and a guy had been basically won it at that point but some bitches were whining about it and they removed Rooster Teeth removed it and it was a really shitty thing to do because it's like oh it's too offensive even though they literally take shit from other fucking cultures and use it in Ruby considering the main basis for Ruby anyway from Monty's design was referencing fucking fairy tales so that was really hypocritical of them, and it was a really shitty thing for them to do. And yeah, I love Donut. Why would you get rid of Donut? It, like, if Donut's such a bad character, then you should have been canceling fucking Bernie from the fucking start, you dumbasses. I mean, too bad he can't cancel him from Rooster Teeth anyway, since he's gonna leave the fucking country. And he already left. 
And then you still got the people like Matt Holm and Jen Brown who are still there, though. You know, you can do something about them, I guess, if you want to cancel them. I don't do it, but that's what's going to happen to them by... Because the more stuff that comes out, like the jokes they did in Red vs. Blue, they're going to get canceled by their increasingly left-wing, crazy social justice warrior audience. Now, Black Sage D had a really good point here. Since we want to be woken here, let me post this little gem. And he quote tweeted himself saying, Black Lives Matter is a fashion trend created by guilty white liberals to give off the impression that they're actually doing good work for the black community without actually doing anything. It's armchair activism, activism at its finest, and it deserves to be mocked. It's a joke. And he's absolutely right. Because remember, I can't stress this enough. Rooster Teeth did a BLM live stream without fucking black people. Without a black person on there, and yet they st st claim to stand for black people. I'm not fucking joking you. It's right here. I'm literally just pulling it up right fucking now. I'm gonna look up the fucking like to dislike ratio on it. 7k to 1.8k. Like, that is bad. And that reminds me, I need to do a response to that whole fucking live stream anyway, because it's a fucking... I remember it being a really stupid ass live stream from the reaction from it from Twitter. But yeah, so you have Gus Sarola, you have freaking Gavin Free, some dumbass in the corner on the right, and then Barbara Dunkelman, who is just a fucking idiot. Yeah, so not a single black person in sight unless Gavin happens to be quarter black like quarterback Garrett is on Ladder with Crowder, which would be a little funny considering some of the circumstances. And then it's just. They have not done a good job, and then you also have that stuff with Joel Heyman leaving. Joel left, he was kicked out because of ideological diversity was not needed at Rooster Teeth. Now, apparently he had said some mean things about uh, John McCain, and that's apparently one of the big reasons they got rid of him, but I don't believe that at all. Because most of those same people probably hated John McCain, and were some of the same people ganging up on him in 2008. Uh, you know, saying some of the stupid shit about him. And the same people who ganged up on Mitt Romney in 2012. Saying ridiculous and outright slander shit about him. Going along with Joe fucking Biden. You know, when Joe Biden was like, he's gonna put black people back in chains. Despite black people being looked at very unkindly by Joe Biden. You know, there's a lot of stuff there, but that can be saved for another video. But yeah, these guys are hypocrites. Alright, and I've been saying for a little bit now, Rooster Teeth is basically, it's just an extension of the Democratic Party. Alright, Joel was like the only guy there I think that was overtly conservative. In a sense, he was kind of like Marty O'Donnell, because Marty O'Donnell is pretty conservative. Uh, he voted Republican, he's staunch conservative. It, and he worked at Bungie, when, you know, Bungie wasn't stupid, but... He was one of the few guys there that was openly conservative. Now, in the business side of things, you can be conservative, but if you're openly conservative, you put yourself open more to risk. And that's kind of like one of the big things going on with like cancel culture and stuff. Say, like, oh no, you don't want people to get canceled. You don't want to get like if you say something against a popular political figure on the left wing part of the part part of the country, it's like. Oh no, we're going to cancel you just because you're a conservative working for this company. We're going to get you fired and all that shit. Not saying that that doesn't happen with right-wing people doing going against left-wing people, but it happens a hell of a lot more to conservatives. But yeah, they fired Joel for ideological bullshit. He was a conservative. He didn't like they didn't like what he was saying about Black Lives Matter and how he was rightfully calling it out. And you know, he called, rightfully called out Black Lives Matter for being really extremist and he got out of there anyway. He was like, I'm not fucking sticking around over here with RT for all this bullshit anyway because they're basically apologizing for him. And they kicked him out for that. And not only that, they have been progressively taking him out of stuff anyway. And that was even before, you know, Monty's death, which was the true downward spiral of Rooster Teeth. Like, they, they just didn't like him. And it was a clear bias against him. From all accounts, at least from what I've been able to hear from word of mouth. But, you know, this is keeps bringing up the bigger point. There are people who, like Filthy Frank, 
an, it's an individual. An individual who made some spicy content in the past. And sometimes he'll delete one of his videos if he thinks he went way too far in it. Uh, as an individual decision, I can respect that. Because that's his content. He's the only one that has say over it. And that's, that's it. It's just his stuff. Not saying that people didn't help him. But mainly that's his property. He's not posting stuff on Filthy Frank anymore. But, you know, if he thinks that he went a little too far with one, he'll delete it. Though the people will still save it because this is the internet anyway. But people like Filthy Frank's humor. It's a hell of a lot different when an organization, company, whatever, starts deleting shit without consent of the original creators because they're either dead or they have been long gone from the company by either being fired or leaving on their own. And that's my thing. Bernie's gone from Rooster Teeth. I don't think he had any input into this decision. And I think this is a big grab-ass situation. Like, they were trying to get themselves into something quick. Like, they needed to do something to save face. Because the more time goes on, the more nothing happens with Rooster Teeth. Less and less people are watching their content all the time. Not only that, apparently they were supposed to be helping bring him back Machinima. Machinima's dead. There's nothing's there anymore. All the content's gone. It's been long gone. They were supposed to be helping to bring back Machinima. They ain't done shit. Then not only that, they're screwing. Once again, they've been screwing with their employees for a decent chunk of time, and they're ruining their own works. And the way they have been responding to criticism on every front has been nothing short of absolutely abysmal. And honestly, I think people are just sick of it. And I think Warner Media is gonna it, it's either either gonna liquidate them by the end of the year or sometime next year they're gonna be just folded into HBO Max. All this stuff's gonna be shifted away. Of course you could sell some of the shit to frickin' Comedy Central and you wouldn't even have to do any of the bullshit with uh you know editing shit out or putting up fucking trigger warnings, like that's gonna fucking solve anything. Alright, I'm sorry, trigger warnings don't help, unless you're in, like, a truly fucked up work. Like, you're watching Bone Tomahawk. Hey, man, somebody gets fucking leg reset, you get to see all of it in gory detail. Or, oh my god, there is a really bad rape scene in this movie, but even then, that's what the fucking rating system is for. The MPAA has that on fucking movies. The ESRB has that in freaking games. There's shit that goes down in stuff, in other people's content. But yeah, Bruce Teeth has no creative integrity. And they've lost it. They've done lost it for a good fucking while. And honestly. Yeah, man. I, I don't see how people could still be with this company in any way, shape, or form. Whether you're a fan or an employee. It's, it's just... It's still, though, really hard to see a company like this fall. But they deserved it. They did this to themselves 110%. And you know what? I will forever lament the fall of this franchise. But I won't lament the fall of the characters who helped get it to that point in the first place. So thank you guys so much for listening. Yep. Came out kind of quick, the topic videos, that this one was just too good to pass up. Uh, yeah. Yeah.